How do we make our willpower effective? We should be earnest and pray in front of the Buddha and be sincere and be down on our knees in front of the Buddha to pray. And the prayer of vows does not disappear into thin air, but it will come to fruition one day because we are leveraging the Buddha's power We're not praying for personal benefits. Like we're not praying to go to Western Pyrland to avoid suffering for ourselves, but to become bodhisattvas and to gain enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. All right, so that's how we make our willpower effective. It's not just for personal benefits or complete self-dependence, but we are leveraging the Buddha's power. And we follow the law of conditionality. We put in the efforts. Willpower gives us guiding principle. When we have willpower, we are deciding to take control of and direct our lives in the right direction, as opposed to just moving along with our karmic forces and to do the things that we don't want to do, but we continue to do things and to live without awareness then we are not changing the directions of a future. When we make vows and we live with awareness and we maintain that willpower, we are taking control of our lives. And we're saying, no, that's not where I want to go to be stuck in the samsara, the cycle of life and death. But I want to go to Sukhavati because that's my willpower. In Amapada, the Buddha says, Irrigators draw of waters, fletchers strain arrows, carpenters shape wood, and spiritually mature discipline themselves. So the irrigator who manages water is skilled in directing water to wherever he wants. The fletchers is skillfully shaping a very straight arrow out of a piece of wood by working skillfully on it. And the carpenter selects a block of wood and constructs whatever he wants out of it, depending on his need. In the same way, the wise persons work upon their mind, restraining it the way they desire. So when we cast rise to willpower, our vow, fa yuan, yuan, that vow power, that willpower allows us to direct our future. We are taking control of our life and not just to drift along our karmic forces and live in a state of mundaneness. And the benefits is liberation from suffering of the cycle of life and death. The benefits of vow is that it gives us a sense of direction, a sense of purpose. Let's summarize what we have just talked about. We developed vow power to overcome the karmic momentum, the karmic forces in order to achieve spiritual liberation. Otherwise, we'll just drift along and we'll continue to live how we've been living day after day, face death, and then encounter next rebirth within the samsara and continue the suffering. But when we make a vow and we have willpower, then we are taking control of our lives in a more positive direction. In other words, we should develop spiritually and mentally in a positive way by providing the seed of our joyful faith, a fertile ground for that seed to grow. And Buddha lands are developed for those who aspire to become bodhisattvas, not just to escape suffering in this world. Buddhas and bodhisattvas can create Buddha lands, but they cannot force sentient beings to be there indefinitely. Sentient beings like us can only be there if we want to be there, if we have the right aspiration. And so we should develop joyful faith and vow for rebirth in Sukhavati. In order to do that, we need to be prepared mentally and spiritually. In order for us to prepare ourselves mentally and spiritually, we should live a life as if we are already in the Western Pure Land. We should live a life that brings happiness to others, meaning to others. And we should make an effort to make this life a better place than the one that we enter. This may sound very ideal, but it is meaningful and it is very motivating. At least it's an aspiration, a high goal that we should strive to achieve.